stop feeling bad for yourself you need to take responsibility responsibility for everything that happens in your life it does not matter responsibility is life yeah. it's you and you're not going to get anywhere if you just start pointing fingers for sure. at everybody uh, responsibility is I would say one of the biggest qualities that you need to have accountability accountability responsibility for everything it couldn't be your fault it's on the track Welcome to the Common Podcast, where we speak upon common sense and realize it really isn't that common. Guys, before I introduce today's guest, you already know at the beginning of every podcast, I always say this. When you come into the podcast, I ask that you come in with an open mind. Obviously, when we have conversations, there's going to be controversy. I just ask, again, that you're very optimistic about it. That way, you enjoy it and, you know, you don't get all riled up over there. Start smashing the dislike button and to everybody, you hate me. But anyways... Today, we have a very special guest, Mr. Mike Allen. Say, what's up, bro? What's going on? What's yeah. going on? We got Carlos yeah. over here. So, I'm going to let Mike Allen just kind of introduce himself, yeah. let, let y'all know what he does for a living, because we also do want to shout you out and what you do, hopefully help you out when you your whole fitness thing that you got going on, because I really do believe in you, and I, I think that you're going to do some great stuff. Thanks, man. Thanks. Uh, yeah, so my name is Mike Allen, as he said. Uh, I'm a personal trainer. Uh, fitness it's my lifestyle you know uh, uh, I've shaped my my life around fitness and stuff like that I also play football uh, semi-professionally uh, at a high level and I've played professional arena um, I played pressure professional arena and uh, so uh, yeah you say you would say that your life revolves around fitness being active. yes being yes because uh, I'm a competitor I'm like to the day I die, I'm I'm going to compete in some way against myself or others. Like I, I don't care. Like that's that's my thing. Like I want to be able to, to be moving the rest of my life. You know, yeah. like I probably die walking. It don't matter. Like you know what I mean. Yeah. But I want to die standing up and shit. Whatever. I think that's very important. I think that's something yeah. that people need that drive. Yeah, it's it's a drive. You lose that drive, then good luck, man. Good luck, cause. I seen it and I don't want to replicate it. So, yeah. I mean, this, I feel like you have to have that dog mentality in order to survive. Not somebody yeah. else is going to come and take it from you. There's somebody yeah. out there that wants it more than you do. And any, any, I'm, I'm not just talking about fitness. Yeah. I'm talking about anything in life, business yeah. and whatnot. Somebody out there while you're sleeping, while you're resting, taking a day off, somebody's out there coming for, coming for yeah. that. You know what I mean? And yeah, it's, 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 it's a competition, but you got to have that dog mentality, but not too much of it, you know, because you still want to, like, function. Because there's, there's people that take it to the next level. Yeah. And, like, uh, you you want to have that dog mentality, but you don't want to be a dickhead, you yeah. know? Like, uh, there's a lot of people, you can tell, like, when someone has that dog mentality and they're just out to prove you wrong. The guy who's who can be relatable and have that dog mentality and uh, be kind to kind. you, that's that guy with true confidence. Yeah. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? Uh, there's there's uh, that, that dog that's like that ferocious dog. Yeah. That ferocious dog, that, that motherfucker's fear. He's based off of fear, you know? Yeah. Uh, that that some Their owner probably beat them, right? Yeah. Uh, but that dog that's in a loving home uh, that is kind – will still like vicious that, when it yeah needs to yeah be. vicious when it needs to be when it needs to protect their own you know what i mean does that make sense yeah it makes a lot of sense and, yeah. and you were talking about it and i'm glad that you said that because in the, before we started recording you're talking about how people have this perspective of you on social media yeah. and how people think that you are that guy that you're yeah. that obnoxious heartless cold guy that just cares about himself conceited um, and what you just said that kind of you know proves that it is the opposite let's talk about that a little bit about how you know, people have this misconception of you and what you think that is the reason why. Uh, honestly, the misconception, it's out there only because I don't put myself more out there. You know, um, like I don't do stuff like this and, and talk into a camera. Yeah. Or, or, but the people that know me, know me. You know what I mean? Uh, and, and I like it like that. I do. I do. Uh, it's just the fact that. I'm, I'm doing something right if some if someone's thinking like that. And it you shows, know? bro. Like, I'm doing something right. It yeah. shows because you have 
obviously you make most of your living off of personal training. Yeah. So if you were that obnoxious, like, like just think about yourself guy, you probably wouldn't have that much business, but you obviously do. So it shows that like people that are just, they're judging a book by its cover, by basically. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I try to be genuine with every interaction I have. And uh, especially with my clients, I'm, it's about them. Yeah. It's about them. So they come in and I'll tell you what, like a lot of these sessions are talking, you know, they just need to get some stuff off their chest, you know? And uh, I'm not there to correct it. I'm not there to give them advice unless they ask for it. I'm just there to listen yeah. and help you out through this time. It, when you work out, it's an escape. Yeah. It's an escape. It's not. It, it's it's not something that's required. You know, you don't have to do it. I I I think it should be required uh, to everybody, but it's not something that they're doing. And plus, yeah. they're playing a lot of money, so it's like get your money's worth. Yeah, for sure. Get, they still got to see results. You know what I mean? So you talked about not being too vulnerable on social media. Do you think that's something? Because you did say that. You do want to be a little bit more vulnerable, yeah. but then you're like, I kind of like it that way. Uh, do you think it's important right at this point in your life to be more vulnerable or to kind of show back? Or do you think there's a perfect balance? What do you think about that? So there's a perfect balance because you're not trying to be like Will and Jada. <laughs> you know what I mean? At the red, <laughs> the, 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 red the, table. The red table, you know what I mean? Because uh, they'd be putting too much of this stuff out there. Yeah. But I think it's good to put relatable content out there. Yeah. You know, stuff like stuff that shows shows you as a person but it doesn't have to be too deep you don't got to put all of you out there you know what i mean i'm uh i believe it or not i I like my privacy i am a private person uh it's just y'all see what i want you to see you know what i mean you know what i mean Mm -hmm. so uh but uh yeah i just it's just uh so my goal right now as we speak is to help five thousand people five thousand people how how however and uh, how I need to do that is what I use my, my social my social media as a tool. It's to get reach, you know, and how I'm going to do that is uh, I reach. That's how I'm going to get my reach through my social media. What's, what's your plan in order to, like, keep count of 5,000 people? Is that your follower count or is that how many DMs you get? So not, not necessarily. I want to do, like, so change perspectives. I like. I can tell you right now. I've changed every one of my clients' perspectives in the gym, mm. uh, and I have. And uh, and I tell them when I sit them down for that consult. Hey, I don't want you to come here with the mentality of like, oh, we're just gotta kick ass every day. I'm gonna get bulky. No, I want you to see this. This is something that like I tell you, you're not gonna be with me forever. So what I'm here to do is, and and I told them that, and I tell them my goal, and I tell them you're not. Gonna, I'm not gonna be with you forever. Like I need to teach you and change your perspective so I can go help the next person. For sure. So how I count that is by changing people's perspective. Mm-hmm. Like how many people can I shift their perspective in the gym to look, help them look at it as more of like a, a habit, a lifestyle that's gonna make you sharper, that's gonna help you be, be yeah. physically sharper, mentally sharper, increase your confidence. Um, you know, like I want that to happen because the way I feel when I get out of that gym, the way I feel when, when, when like I'm in the gym and I, and I see my results and stuff like that. I feel good, man. I really do. And it boosts my confidence. And why not do the same for you and that person? Yeah. Like that's, that's a great trainer right there. And the only reason I'm saying that is because a trainer that wants you to stay with them forever only wants you for their money. Now, yeah. I'm pretty sure you've heard the saying, you know, a lot of people uh, do that. Fit, feed somebody a fish, you feed them for a day, teach them how to fish, you feed them for a lifetime. Uh, some if you're training somebody and they need you for the rest of their life, then you've taught them nothing. No, yeah, no, you should yeah. be able to teach someone yeah. how to do it on their own for the rest, a rest of their life. Eventually, that's the job of a trainer. Same thing with parents, right? Yeah. People think that you know, parents. Um, oh, well, bad parents are someone who doesn't want their children to surpass them. Good parents are selfless parents that cultivate their child in yes. order to not only surpass them but be someone that they can never be yes exactly uh, you're a facilitator i'm yeah. a facilitator i'm exactly. facilitating the ability for you to get out there on your own exactly i'm a facilitator that's all i am i'm not a pt i'm a facilitator yeah of fitness yeah i facilitate that what there would you go. say you are like you said your your goal is five thousand. so yeah. right now where would you see yourself like maybe halfway not even 10 percent. not even bro uh see my ultimate goal is to help as many people as possible yeah right but it's good to set like a number yeah you know uh i would say i'm about like maybe 
five percent. Five percent. Five percent. Couple hundred. Yeah. No, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Five percent. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. Yeah, man. I love this shit. I love it. I really do, man. I wake up and I'm happy about my work. Uh, I already told myself I'm, I'm dedicating my life 100% to this. Yeah. Uh, in any way, form, or fashion, if I need to make some some sacrifice and stuff like that, this is always going to be in the background. It's yeah. it's always going to be there. Yeah. It's not even going to be in the background. Like, cause how I actually got into this, how I actually got into this. So I was going to school. Okay, I was working a full time job as a manager. Uh, and I was like, man, I've always wanted to be a PT. Right? I always wanted to help people and stuff like that. So I even told myself in high school when I was when I was doing it is that when I get out of here, I'm gonna help kids like me. You know, uh, I'm gonna help because football and like athletics that was my escape. I told myself I'm gonna help athletes. Yeah. In high school, and uh, I totally forgot about that goal. I really did. Yeah. It just came to fruition, you know, because I really meant that meant that when I said. Yeah. Uh, and so. Back to what I was saying, uh, I would wake up at 5 a.m. 5 in the morning, go to the gym, work with like these two athletes. Shout out to Isaiah, uh, and then uh, Alina. She's she's uh, Isaiah is going to A and M, and Alina she's going to go to a D- Division two school, uh, a okay. football player, volleyball player. I wake up 5 a.m. in the morning. Uh, I would go uh, work with them, go to work, leave work, go to school, boom, do it all again. I was chum about it. It was always there. Yeah. It was always there. Yeah. So did you always start like since you were a little kid, like, like sports? You were always so, in sports, or so sports. Yeah, yeah, I was. My my first sport actually uh, was gymnastics. Oh, I, I was in gymnastics. My second sport was soccer. Unknowingly, I I was pretty good. I was a pretty good soccer yeah. player. Uh, I was like running around. Uh, like I was called a ball hog. Like, I wanted to score. I didn't. I didn't know any better. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. Like I think I always kind of had that dog in me, you know, yeah, the uh, mamba like, mentality. <laughs> yeah, I think I, I think I always did, but I was unknowingly knowing, like yeah. I was unknowingly like I'm a ball hog. I'm gonna take this down there. I'm gonna yeah. score, and I'd literally be the only one to score, <laughs> and uh, we would win the game. Uh, but like I remember like playing soccer and kicking my shoes off, and uh, like every time I would kick the ball, my shoe would fly off, and like mid game I'd go to my mom, she'd tie my shoe, <laughs> and, yeah, and to get back on the court. Yeah, uh, I played basketball. Basketball was my worst sport, believe it or not. Considering my, I'm a brother, well, I mean, uh, you're, my skin. To me, <laughs> to me, you look like you're built to lift. Like to me personally, yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't think you're built for a, a basketball player. I think yeah, you're, no, you're no. built for like football. So my or, best sports, honestly, were track and football. Okay, that was my bread and butter. Track and football. Yeah, I, I was a relay boy in track, and I played uh, football at Harlingen. Shout out to them, uh, high school, the Harlingen. Oh, the Harlingen. How many yeah. years did you do gymnastics? Dude, honestly, I was too young to remember. I just remember going to the YMCA uh, mm-hmm. out in Missouri, yep. where I'm from, and uh, just doing that. And I believe. Uh, Do you think gymnastics helped you a lot to build like a lot of your foundation, bro? Thank you. Good question. Uh, thank you. So, I'm a strong believer. Like when I have kids, the first sports I'm putting them in is gymnastics and soccer. Really? So, because uh, unknowingly, it probably did. Probably did help me because uh, in gymnastics, I. Uh, you, you you develop um, body control, yeah. number one, strength, upper body, lower. Uh, and I think if you look at, if you take a, a gymnast and put them in any sport, they'll do okay. Yeah. Okay. They'll do okay. My, yeah. my plan is to put my child in gymnastics and some type of self-defense, mixed martial arts yeah. in some sense. Yeah. Those two. Yes. Those are going to be my foundations for my child. Yeah. Because, yeah. yeah through Especially gymnastics mobility. Is, I think dude. mobility the, the mobility and the that flexibility too. that you get from gymnastics will work in anything that you do. Right? Yeah. Well, yeah. I feel like that's anything something you, you have to keep up with, though. Because you, be, you can be yes. very mobile as a child, and then if you stop for, like, you know, the majority of your teens, and then you try to do CrossFit. As a it's, it's not going to yeah. happen. Yeah, no, yeah, this is something you have to upkeep because especially if you're putting on more muscle, all those muscles start to contract and you yeah. stay tight. You stay tight. And then that builds up over time. That builds up over time. And that's why you see people, and especially if, like, you're sitting down in school all day as a kid, you know, yeah. that's, I, I, sit, I say that's one of the big reasons a lot of people are tight, you know, and you, I mean, shit, I think when I was in school, recess was getting rid of, you know what I mean? So like, get these kids more, so teach them outside, man. I don't know. Something. And that's good, bro, because soccer, I remember, I mean, the first thing I played was soccer and I didn't get to play, honestly, I didn't get to play any other sport until seventh grade when, when I joined football. Yeah. And 
What position? Every other – in football? Yeah. Running back. Okay, you look like a but running back. But he- it helped like, – <laughs> honestly, soccer probably helped me so much that I, I didn't even know at the time, but I was the fastest one in the whole school. Yeah. I was like – like so much quicker at like little movements, little short, like even like sprints, like long distance. Yeah. Like my conditioning has just built up like from all those years of playing soccer. And you can tell because like I never played football like ever do. Like I never touched football yeah. until seventh grade. And I remember like the coaches didn't even know me. Like th- like nobody knew me. Like I was always like, you know, like in soccer. So I joined football. Nobody knew who I was. So put me on the B team, right? All right, yeah, we like, start somewhere, man. Yeah. So, first game, dude. First game of the season. So, uh, A team is getting all the first reps, right? So, we're all just in the silent. I remember the A team running back, which is our friend. Uh, he wasn't getting anywhere, dude. And so, I mean, just to like let kids try out, they put another guy in, right? Running back. Boom. No, we we hadn't even scored. And I remember they're like, "Yeah, go in." And I was like. How, how car- I mean, my mentality was how hard can it be? Just run. don't let people touch you. You know, don't let yeah, people tackle no, you. No, literally, yeah, literally, just, uh, run and just try not to get tackled. And, and that's, that's a dude, sport. First play, I went for like thirty yards, and I remember the coaches were like, "What the fuck? Who the heck, who the fuck is this?" Yeah. And uh, so I said, soccer like player. two more players, uh, two more plays later, I scored. And ever since that first game. Boom, moved up to starting running back. Like, and ever since then, like, I was just like the fastest one. Like, even track, like, track, uh, track and football were probably my best sports. And you know what, dude? Since all my friends were in football and track, I stopped playing soccer. Yeah. And I think that was my, honestly, probably, if I regret anything from high school, it's probably that quitting soccer. Soccer? Yeah, because mm. freshman year, I was in the varsity team for soccer, freshman year, but I quit before the season started because track oh, was track. during the same time, okay. and all my friends were in track, and I didn't know any of the soccer people. Like, and you get the yeah. track was fun too, you know. Yeah, and you get to hang out with all your friends and like. I was never a fast guy, so yeah. probably see. So I would, I would go to all the track. You'd be meets. surprised these big, these big boys could run yeah. like. You know, like there, there's long some distance. Big boy CrossFitters too that are pretty yeah. conditioned. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, definitely. So, what are some steps you you get a client? You get okay someone. What are the like the first things that you tell them? You you know what what's the task? What's the task at hand when you get somebody in? So uh, I go into yeah. So um, it all depends on who's who's coming in uh, for this consult to sit them down and stuff like that. Uh, but the majority of the people either they're trying to lose weight or bulk up, right? Um, well, I tell them, I'm just like, okay, well, like I said, it depends on what they, um, what their goal, what is. Their goal is, you know, because, yeah. uh, like, uh, if they tell me something, like, I've never been in the gym before. Like, mm-hmm. I, have, I have clients that have never been in the gym before, and they're the easiest to work So step with. one would be, what's your goal? Step one would be, what's your goal? And, uh so you would explain this to me, but I would really try to dig deep. So I try to make them feel comfortable, mm-hmm. you know, and then uh, comfortable in a buyer. I sit them down. They tell me some pretty personal stuff, uh, depending on who they are, if they're open or not. And um, we'll, uh, we'll get into that, and we'll come up with a plan of attack. But I, what I try to do is I really try to dig in. First. Yeah, I try to dig in and see, like, why? Why do you want to? Yeah. Why the, you want to change this? Why, yeah. why is important. Yes. If the why weighs more than... Then everything else you're gonna get through. Yeah, and I try to get I try to get below the surface level because there's a, there has to be a lot of trust there. Like I don't want to be just like that trainer is just like oh show up we go do that. I'm not gonna explain anything. Just do that workout and then walk away. Yeah, I, remember, I, I, yeah. I, I I have people that that come to me and it's like that. Like, like I'm like have you so one of the first questions I ask is like have you ever worked with another personal trainer before? They're like no. I'm like great. I can set the example. Yeah, you know. And then, uh, so, like, I can tell you, like, hey, I'm, if you have any questions, ask. Um, I, I'm giving you an explanation for every lift you do, you know, because uh, there's, and if some, I might, if some say they have had a personal training before, I, and I'm like, okay, what did, you, what did, uh, what did they do that you didn't like, and what did you do, what did they do that you did like, so yeah. I can try to repeat that and not do what you didn't like. And, 
a lot of the times, like, they'll talk about that, like, well, like, they never play, explained anything, or, like, they'll tell me to do this and then walk away, and then, yeah, nothing, I really got nothing out of it, and I didn't even see any results. I'm pretty sure, though, you have some of those people that are just <clears throat> never going to be satisfied, you know? There's, so, yes, there's gonna... uh, there are some people, but I try to be understanding, yeah. you know, I'll be like, okay, well, because people only change when they're ready. Yeah, So 100%. when when uh, when somebody when somebody like that comes to me, I'm just like, uh, well, oh well, I, they'll come back when they're ready, or they'll, they'll find it, they'll find out what to do when they're ready. Yeah. Because like I said, I'm not gonna, I'm not here to change you. I'm here to help you. I'm here to help you. What do you do with the? Okay, so I was a personal trainer years back, right? Okay. I worked at a gym, and I was I was I did personal training for like two years probably. Um, so what do you do? What do you do when you get a, a client that thinks they know more than you? Damn. Because I can tell you that that would be the most frustrating type of client that I can have. So I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. So there's going to be clients like I, you get clients from all walks of life, right? And yeah. they're going to know more stuff than like in one area. They, they are going to know more stuff yeah. than you. Um, I haven't had that situation happen to me yet where there's a, a client like, well, I've had clients who are like, oh, I'm, like I've done this before and I do this and I understand that. I'm like, yeah. Uh, what I kind of do is I kind of, so before you even get the chance, I overwhelm with all this knowledge that I'm like, oh shit. So like I established like that, you know, like, you just kind of, like, I, I, th like this is my thing. Yeah. yeah. You know, I, I established that. Um, but um, for the most part, if they have something to say, like, hey, I read this thing and, boom 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 I'm like oh wow that's great wow and if I don't know it I'm like okay I never heard of that you know Let me check it like, out. like you know that whole TikTok thing with the Rice Krispies no yeah. okay so uh, there was this thing going around there was a TikTok video it pretty, went pretty viral there was a uh, so hey uh, if you want to like uh, like, like Jim Hack uh, you want to get a great pump uh, eat a rice crispy before you oh. work out and your pump will be fantastic. I'll be like a little sugar it, rush. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then and, and, and I had a client so I saw this TikTok <laughs> and I'm like, oh yeah, what was in it? And they're like, oh, you eat a rice crispy before the gym and you have a great pump. <laughs> they get all and, excited. And, and, yeah, and I'm like, I'm like, yeah, you will. And you know, I'm like, do you know why? And they're like, uh, no. I'm like, well, it's carbohydrates. That's why I tell you to eat before you come in here. Yeah. You know, like, I'm like, eat something. Like, if you're a morning client, I'm trying to push overnight oats with some fruit, or something like that, or like, um, you know, like a simple breakfast. So I'm like, hey, yeah, you want to have your carbs before your workout. That's fine. Go ahead and do that because uh, that rice crispy is full of carbs. It's probably not the ideal carbs, but I mean, you're going to work it out and it's something you like. I mean, come on. If you're counting your calories correct, you're going to, because you want to watch your intake, go ahead. Go ahead, you know, but. I haven't had that where like a client is like trying to correct me the whole time. Um, what, what's not at all. what's your the what's your age group like? Most of the people that you train, what, what what's their age range? So I worked with everything from fourteen year olds and going into maybe forties, forty forties. Okay. Uh, I would say the typical age range. So I'm either working with teenagers or I'm working with like people in their thirties. Or, or late 20s gotcha yeah so um but i found that the kids are a little easier to work with yeah the kids sure. the kids the kids are a little bit easier to work with or the people that haven't been in the gym before yeah you know because you get to mold them like i i have this one client she's a girl she had never been in the gym before and i'm super proud of this girl like really she's been with me for about maybe a year almost a year in february uh but she literally came in here, uh, came to the gym and was like, I don't know anything, just teach me. I'll do anything you tell me. I'm like, okay, uh, we'll do this. We're gonna take it, save him slow, right? Whatever. Shit, you're gonna do the Murph tomorrow. No, no. <laughs> I don't, so that's, a, that's another thing. That's another, when I first got it started, I, I scared a lot of clients away. Too hard Yeah, workout. because like yeah. I'm trying to give them the Mike Allen experience, you know, with yeah. stuff like that, but no. Don't do I, I, that. I think, I think a lot of young trainers, that's the because that was my thing too. I was trying to, to train kill them. them the way I train. Yeah, and everyone's different. And you, you can't you do that. You learn that by experience. Yeah, like yeah, you learn that over time. You I'm pretty sure there's a lot time. of trainers out there that also, they want to make them work so hard to where they're like, yeah, you're getting your money's worth. Yeah, or like intimidate them like so that, we, yeah. that way they don't go tell people like, ah, he doesn't 
doesn't get me tired. Yeah. 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 Exactly. But a lot. I've, I found like so like seventy percent of my sessions was like talking. Like, I'm not a therapist, but like they want to talk. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but we're but we're still getting worked on. Like, oh, and they're talking to me. I'm like, yeah, next set, okay. And they're they're doing their set. They're talking. Wow. Okay. Cool. Yeah. I'm just listening. Uh, but I found like distracting them while they're working. Like, it's like so you're running, right? Are you focused on is the run? running? And that shit hurts. It's gonna be dreadful. Yeah, it's gonna be dreadful. But like you're running with somebody at that same pace and you're talking the whole time. The yeah. pain's not even there. So, like, I found that that's a really good strategy. Uh, but, uh, yeah, you try not to overwhelm them. Uh, just do do enough. Not everybody is on the same fitness level. Uh, and you find that out through assessments and stuff like that. Yeah. And, uh, but, yeah, yeah. Strength-wise, like that girl, she was yeah. nothing. She, like, she didn't have anything. And now she's, like, she's got this and she's flexing. She's, like, her whole persona has changed. Yeah, I got the confidence her, is yeah, there. Yeah, I, I got to see her change so much. I think personal trainers are so important. It, it's yeah. And it's a very, it's a lot harder than what people actually think. It, that is. it is. And like you said, because everybody's different. So mm -hmm. like you have to, if there's a different approach. A good trainer knows that there's a different approach for every single every, person. Yeah, in there. They had a different stage, at a different level, different schedules, uh, willingness, it, it all yeah. different. Yeah, commitment. Because there's some people that think like they want one, and then you, f and you can tell like you don't want to be here. Yeah, you don't want to be here. But yeah, what can you do? People don't change until they're ready. Yeah, for sure. That's yeah. true, dude. I made a video a while back called Four Principles of Fitness and Wellness." <clears throat> okay. And uh, number one was a mindset, and because yeah. the, the mind is the most powerful thing that we attain. Without the mind, without the mindset, nothing is gonna change after that. Right. Yeah. Uh, so wherever the mind goes, the body follows. Second would be nutrition. I know it sounds cliche and people make fun of the saying, the but cliches are usually true. Yeah, you are what you eat. Yeah. If facts. you eat clean, you're gonna. If you eat good, you look good, you feel good. Yeah. That's the way that it works. Yeah. One thing I like to tell to my clients is the law of averages. The law of average says, on average, if you eat healthy and good, on average you'll be healthy and good. Yeah. But if you're eating shitty on average, and then healthy sometimes. Laws of average says you're you're shitty. Exactly. You know. So yeah, I agree with that. Law of averages for yeah. sure. Number three is um, exercise. And see, what people don't understand and what they get confused by exercise, it's your playground. You yeah. can make it whatever you want to be. Again, yeah. different people at different stages. If you're morbidly obese, go for a walk. It could literally be your exercise. Walk yeah. your dog. Um, now, if you want to be an athlete, it's going to look a little bit different, right? But it can, depending on your goals. It can look in different shaped yeah. forms. You can go cycling. You can go swimming. You can do all these stuff. That should be the fun part. Yeah. Don't make yeah. it dreadful for yourself. You should be, have. It should be your escape, right? So, uh, that's what I like to get across to people is that that exercise portion, step number three, has it has to be fun. It should be. You should want to get out of the bed to yeah. do that. Exactly why I try to like make it fun, have somewhere they can talk and stuff like that, make them laugh, crack a joke while yeah. they're working out. For you sure. Know? Not to distract them, but to make it fun, to for sure. make, make them want to You're come gonna back. You're going to want them to come back. Yeah, for exactly. Sure. Exactly, because um, the hardest part is really starting. Yeah. And the second hardest part is staying with it. For sure. Staying with it. The easy part is like, I'm already there. Let's keep going. Yeah. yeah. When yeah. you're motivated, that's Yeah, when, that's exactly. Easy. That's the easy part. Yeah. Uh, but there's going to be there's gonna be times where you're in a, when you're in a rut, when you're in a rut and you're not feeling it. Yeah. Uh, but that's where that that motivation's gone and that commitment comes in and that yeah. willingness discipline. comes in, the willing, the, the discipline to go, uh, the willingness to like, like, so it's like, I lost motivation, but I still know I want to get better. So yeah. I'm going to go. Well, that's where the, that's where principle number four of my four principles comes in. That is consistency. Without consistency, consistency it doesn't matter if you're doing one, two, three, but if you're not doing it majority of the yeah. time, nothing is going to change yeah. i used to write uh sayings and poems and stuff like that and i had this one po uh riddle that goes uh, winners win losers lose yeah but what makes a winner a winner and a loser a loser if all winners lose and all losers win yeah and the answer is consistency because who won the super bowl last year the buccaneers they didn't have a perfect season no but they won most games facts they're winners facts Right. Hey man, I gotta say something real quick. So I'm a Chiefs fan, die hard, day one. I'm from Missouri. Whatever. I got Tony Gonzalez jersey in my room. I got two Patrick <laughs> Mahomes jerseys. I got a signed Kareem Hunt jersey before he kicked the white bitch. Yeah. Uh, uh, whatever. Um, so 
Kareem Hunt? Is that what so said? let me tell you. Yeah, Kareem Hunt. I got a signed Kareem Hunt jersey from his rookie season, leading Russia. <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah, leading Russia. And uh, I got a signed Patrick Mahomes football from oh. the year they won the Super Bowl. This wow. was pre Super Bowl. Um, but okay, so um, yes, I am a big chief. So the Bucks went 11 and 5 last year and won the Super Bowl. The Chiefs are right now are about 6 and 4. They have the same record right now as when they won the Super Bowl back in 2019, 2020. So yeah. it's still possible. All the, all the people talking down on <laughs> the Chiefs, like, it's still good. We still, yeah. we still up there. Honestly, bro. As long as you got Patrick Mahomes, man. That's what I'm saying. Five, 400 yards, five TDs, y'all good. All those people that were saying Patrick Mahomes fell off. Man. Bro, See, come on. Honestly, to me, it's it, any team that's in the playoffs, it's still in discussion. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. And especially when you're playing that high of a level, it's, it's, a, it's a game of mentality at that point. Yeah. Because everybody's like, physically gifted and and also in the playoffs it's also a game of being careful with the mistakes yeah right? whoever makes the most mistakes out through the game is probably the one that's gonna lose yeah yeah a lot of times these teams beat themselves yeah they do yeah. working with athletes um you you get to see like the, the mentality like yeah. you honestly i i don't want to be i don't want to sound like that but you can tell when there's an athlete that is not going to do well yeah, be, they might be the most physically gifted, talented. whatever talented. But if their mentality is not there, then like, dude, dude, because honestly, um, you go to these colleges and stuff like that, right? And you you see these athletes, a lot of them just like don't give a shit that yeah. they're even there. They're just so blessed. They've been given everything entitled. And I'll tell you one thing. Um, you know what I like about the valley? Uh, the valley gets a lot of shit, right? But there's a lot of like good mentality values down here believe it or not from like the culture you know because you start to leave out of here and you start to realize oh shit like people think they're entitled and stuff like that yeah like i was in dc like uh maybe two weeks ago three weeks ago and dude co the, the the way people talk over there is just it's annoying it really is yeah like vaccines and they're like entitlement like i need to do this hey did you get your vaccine no i'm from texas oh shit you're from texas <laughs> like for real, Texas is feared, man. Texas, I believe it. We the ones, man. We the rebels, bro. I don't know. That's Florida. Oh, <laughs> Florida, Florida doesn't dude. count yeah. as that's as the United States. Country, bro. They know, do their Texas own shit over there, especially <laughs> Miami. That we the Texas. cutoffs, the cutoffs at Miami, bro. Yeah. Like, yeah. that's a that's an island. Nah, I'll tell you what, Texas is the best state. Produce some of the best best sure. athletes too. Yeah, they say it's whatever. They say Florida, California, and Texas produce the best athletes. So. I have a question, dude. Yeah. So this is one of my pet peeves, bro. I, and I want to get your opinion on this. Okay. So what do you think about trainers that are overweight? Because you oh, that's seen a good them, question. I, I, that's my fucking pet peeve, bro. I cannot. It used to be my pet peeve, okay. but I have a response for I, you. I, okay, there's a, there's a side to it, though. I mean, I do understand that there is trainers that are really good trainers that might not be in shape because of injury prior or something happened to them that might have left them to gain weight or whatever the reason is right yeah but yeah. there is those trainers that are that are overweight that don't look the part that's that's my pet peeve yeah. that they don't look the part so in, in my mentality it's like if i were to be if, we, if i were to hire him as my trainer it's like uh, like for me it's hard to wrap my my head around like you're telling me to do stuff that you can't do. Or you're telling me to do stuff that like I think yeah. you don't you've never done. Or or, or just yeah, I'm like, supposed yeah. to trust you yeah. when and you I, can And I can see where you're doing where you're coming with that. I really can because like with I what I tell my athletes is like I, what I tell my clients is I'm not gonna put you anything I haven't done. So yeah. I've i I've, I've touched yeah. out all this shit. And you know? And uh I see that, I see your point, but there has to be some context behind that question. Yeah. Because um, yeah, so like I mean, if you're working at a big box gym and you're a trainer and you're fat and you didn't really work out, but you became a trainer to lose weight, because I feel like that's the mentality behind it. Like people become a trainer so they know fitness, so they can lose weight themselves. Um, if you're that guy, no. But there are some pretty knowledgeable, some pretty knowledgeable guys who know what they're doing who are, who are big, you know. Yeah. And uh, I, sh shit, I was coached. I'm coached by one. I'll tell you that right now. Uh, and he knows his shit. He's very knowledgeable, and uh, there, when it comes to strength and stuff like that, he's very knowledgeable about that stuff. 
He didn't put me on an athletic program. Yeah, because he, he like, couldn't do half of that shit I was doing. But dude was knowledgeable. Oh, for but sure. there's there's a certain type of yeah. person. There's a certain context, you know, because I feel like there's two types of those people. Because yeah. um, there's there's a, the fat guy who just got into it. That's like so like I can make you fitter, but he really doesn't. No. Because I feel like you have to like. So if you're okay, so so check this out. So if you're a fat trainer, and you're strong as fuck. And you're fat because you didn't keep on that weight because you're a powerlifter or some shit. There, there, there is a great line. You know what I mean? Yeah. Then yeah. But if you're a fat trainer and you just got into all that and um, you really just wanted to learn about exercise and you don't really apply it, then I'm not going to trust you. Because yeah. cause you can have knowledge, but you need to have the context behind that knowledge also. You know, well, you need to know the grit. You yeah, need to know the, the work the that comes grit, behind the grit, what you're going to put them in. And knowledge so especially in exercise it's very broad yeah it's very broad uh, a lot of things get misconstrued and i um you have to understand how to apply it like okay why am i gonna why am i gonna apply this technique right now for this person for this person yeah. you know uh because uh let's be real so exercise there's a whole lot there's aerobic anaerobic you know uh conditioning metabolic conditioning and stuff like that yeah. If you, so people get really good at running, right? But they get so good at running, they go run a marathon. If you do any type of exercise enough, you're going to become fit mm -hmm. in a different way. Yeah. You know what I mean? Gotcha. If you do something enough, you're going to get good at it. You're going to see results from it. Yeah. If you do something enough, right? Uh, so, um, yeah. I don't know if I got where that's going. Yeah. I, see, you see, like my only argument, because I used to be that guy. It's like, well, because I, I went to school for exercise and science. And yeah. And... The first thing that my instructor had told us when we walked in, first thing was like, well, guys, um, not to offend anybody, but I do see some overweight. And I was overweight at the time. I'm still kind of overweight right now. But uh, uh, you're pretty big. The, like, well, like, I'm getting, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, like muscular. Down. Yeah, it's like muscular. Down too, a little bit. But um, back then, I was just a blob. Okay. It's like, not to offend anybody, but I do see a little bit of overweight people here. And we don't like to... We like to preach, practice what we preach. So if you're gonna be a trainer, we do ask that you try to apply that on yourself. I like that, I respect I like, that. I like that too. Um, so my whole mentality was like, man, trainers should always look the part if they're gonna be training other people. But I also now gained the perspective of, well, coaches don't play. I mean, there's there are some times where there's very knowledgeable people that aren't really fit to do the things that they attain the knowledge for. Yeah. And we can look at it at football coaches. I mean, there's some running back coaches that are yeah. would never do running back yeah. stuff. Yeah, They're exactly. They're very, very knowledgeable at it, though. Uh, yeah. Andy Reid. There you yeah. go. Kansas City Chiefs, offensive you, coordinator, quarterback coach. Let's go. So I, I agree with it. At, well, I kind of i am supporting what you just yeah, said. It, it there has to be some – yeah, because, dude, there's some people out there that are, like, actual geniuses. Yeah. And, like, they have, like – so I have a feeling – I like so I feel like when you're in the fitness industry, you get, a, like, an instinctual feeling. Like, it shit makes sense. Shit makes sense to you, you know? And, like, if you're that bigger guy and – you ha you're that kind of genius in the way how to use exercise and stuff like that, how to make it more applicable to stuff. Okay. If you're that genius and you know how to make it more applicable to people and stuff like that, then if, if you can, then you're like, you can do that. It's yeah. good. It's good. Yeah. Now, the only, the only downfall for that is that people are going to judge you by the, by the cover. Right, because if someone yeah. if if exactly. someone doesn't know anything about fitness and they don't know that, let's say you're overweight, Mike Allen's overweight, and I come into the gym and I want a trainer, and I don't know anything about training, I'm not gonna come up to you. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? That's the downfall. So if you do want to, okay. to attain business, yes, business, true. Um, but then again, don't. So in the beginning, when you start like that, because say you start and you're fat. Yeah. And you finally get that one client, you know, someone finally gives you a chance and you do good and your heart's invested, invested in that client. Word and of mouth. Word of mouth. Yeah. I, I'm yeah, saying it's, it's possible. Yeah, it's, it's possible if you know, if like eventually like you're going to do good. But yeah, it's, it's hard because first impressions do matter, right? First impressions do you, matter. You, yeah. People don't judge a book by a cover, but you're going to do it. First yeah. impressions matter. Yeah. And, and see, like my question was kind of like, it was it was plain. It wasn't a because Coach Barber, for example, he's a he used to be a coach at our school, but he's a 
strongman. Okay. So he obviously so cannot different. fucking look straight. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Shit, you know. You ever, but, I told a strong man, "Hey, bro, you're looking lean." He got offended. Yeah. <laughs> you can't, For real, yeah, he got bro, offended. You can't bro. fucking tell him that, bro. For so real. he has to maintain. If you were, if you didn't know him, and you were to just see him at the mall, at the, you're like, "That's a fat guy." That's a fat guy. But dude, that guy is so knowledgeable, bro. Like, mm-hmm. if he were to write a strength and conditioning program for you. He would fucking get your results, bro. But you would mm-hmm. never think that by looking at him. Yeah. But what I I do know other trainers, I know that they're not they're not strong men. They're not power lifters. They at some point in their life were fit or semi fit. They had some knowledge about what they're doing, but they they let themselves go, you know and. Yeah. Obviously, the knowledge doesn't disappear. You don't fucking just forget yeah. because you got overweight. But that is my pet peeve is if you are going to be a trainer. Pick the part. Do your just best. Do your best to, to you, you just can't tell a client, hey, you got to eat healthy when you are. <laughs> yeah. Healthy, yeah. You know? like, so and being a hypocrite, I can't I can't do that. You know, so um, what I tell people is I got to eat. I eat, I eat good, but that on average, I'm eating healthy. Yeah. And that's why I get these law of averages. Because I'm not going to be a hypocrite and make you eat healthy every fucking day because it can be super tedious and yeah. overwhelming. But I tell you, start. Start. Yeah. Eat healthy most of the time. Here, let me give you some guidance. And yeah. obviously, right, we all right. have different fucking genetics, right? I mean... Yeah. yeah. You have some pretty great genetics, let's be honest. I'm pretty blessed. Yeah. But... but there's still hard work. There. Yeah, there's, there's, there's still yeah, hard work. I'm not denying there. that. I'm just saying you, you do have some. I, I do. My my back genetics are like my goat. And yeah. there's some of us know. that can eat a pizza and still be shredded. Yeah, you know. I'm not that guy. I'm that guy. I'm not that guy. I'm, bro. That, I'm that guy. But, <laughs> <laughs> but I, I, you're not that guy. <laughs> I'm that guy. You're not that guy, pal. No, nah. you're not that guy. Now, nah, uh, but I'll tell you what. I can do that because I'm burning on average 3,500 to 5,000 calories a day. How I know that is my whoop. Shout out to whoop. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. J- Jason you think, you think I'm me lying one. too. Man. Jason's sending me one. Jason Swoop doesn't like him. Oh, for him, real? Bro. Good. Yeah, good. He got me one. Bro. Jason no, Swoop doesn't like him. I got, I, <laughs> I got him into whoop, man. Like today I've only yeah. burnt 2,500 calories. It was a slow day. Well, yesterday I burnt 3,200, but this day I burnt 3,900, 4,000 basically. But like... It's good, like bro. I have days where I burn like shit, so I'm like, okay, I need to eat more. Well, what is uh, what is it, Jason Swoop tell him after uh, workout? So pa- I don't even know what it is. So pa- <laughs> what? I don't know. Swoop always makes him feel like shit. <laughs> yeah, no. Yeah, that's pretty cool though. What were we talking about before that? Um, we we're talking about trainers and fat trainers. Fat trainers. <laughs> okay. You have any other questions for me? comes with like exercise science or whatever i don't know i can let, let me wrap that that little thing up okay so also like the thing is you said that um the knowledge doesn't go away obviously that's obvious but the yeah. thing is about um exercise is that it's always evolving so you kind of have to stay in that algorithm yes. of yes. exercise because things are changing different concepts are, you know you have to stay yeah. up to date up to date with, with all this stuff but also in that and the reason why I say algorithm is because we use algorithm for social media yeah. but it's also in our life too what do we surround ourselves with if we're gonna surround ourselves with things that have things to do with fitness mm-hmm. well our bodies are obviously obviously gonna reflect that as you're, well you're a product of your environment yeah yeah, yeah. so um, I, I believe that you got to stay in the game but the only thing about that is so some new research comes out. Yeah. It becomes a big old thing. Okay. So, so some research comes out, uh, it becomes a big thing and people want to stick to that. Like this yeah. is this is the only thing that works. Nah. No, no, like that's good to implement, but still keep variety up in there, you know? Like who's this cuz that's there's more than one way to do things. It's like diets, man. Well, there's not, there's like no that. perfect like diet, diet, you know. There's it's no perfect whatever. diet. Try try every diet until you find something that works for you. But the thing yeah. about that too is that people that are probably seeing that they just see the headlines. They don't even look in the context. They don't see. That's why. Uh, how many people were the studies conducted on? Yeah. Like five people study. Yeah, five like, people. come on. Yeah, it's context, bro. Context. Yeah. And uh, like that study comes out, like, oh shit, 
Um, rice krispies. <laughs> like yeah, like eating eating rice krispie first thing in the morning before you go work out will enhance like your gains. You gotta hit that metabolic it, well, window. Well, like so that's that's the that's the thing. So uh, a rice krispie in the morning will enhance your gains. Um, Twenty, like, just it'll enhance your gains. Yeah. Right. And then you go read the article, and it's just like. It's like, oh, a hundred person case study found an increase in like two people of 0.1%. You know, enough, then that's what happens with the study. And it's just like, mm, yeah, you know. these people are like crazy genetics and shit. It's like, bro, come on. <laughs> yeah. Good genetics or bad genetics? Because we can, we can, we can blame genetics yeah. and whatever, you know, me personally, like, um, at one point, you know, I was shredded. I had yeah. a six pack, whatever. But I'm not that guy. I, I, I'm a bigger guy, and if I let myself go, I'll gain weight yeah. quickly. But I can use that to my excuse, whatever. And that's the thing. People use it a lot as an excuse. And that's that body positivity yeah. thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. That too. That too. And um, I was actually so like you got to keep staying in the loop of things, right? Yeah. So I listen to a lot of podcasts that like uh, and talk about like right now. I'm into the Huberman podcast. Dr. Huberman. Dr. Huberman. I'm into that shit okay. right now. That shit's good. Uh, but there was another one I was listening to. I forgot who it was. But they were talking about genetics and epigenetics. I'm unfamiliar with that. Okay, so there's genetics and epigenetics. Genetics is like, okay, you have uh, big traps. Okay. okay. And you naturally have big traps. Whatever. Yep. Okay. So, um, okay, so there's a guy with the good genetics and there's a guy with the epigenetics. So epigenetics are kind of what you're saying like as like, so all genetics do is it helps you start off ahead right doesn't mean the person with bad genetics can't get can't there. catch up okay. can't catch there can't catch up there's a little there's little things in the day that you can do that's going to change your epigenetics like over time so like yeah. you, if you start like okay say you're 20 years old and you want bigger arms but you're starting behind that guy over there with bigger arms he's already you know, had, he has, big, he, arms. He's had yeah. big arms his entire life well there's little things that you can do throughout your day and build these little habits that don't For increase sure. your epigenetics yeah you know so epi meaning upper surface level genetics yeah it's just know? gonna take a little bit more work a it's little just bit more a little more yeah the, he goes in more into depth but uh yeah. shit go google epigenetics for sure and so what i always genetics. i always tell people is that you almost never look how you want but mm -hmm. you always look how you deserve always yeah it doesn't matter good genetics bad genetics if you want something bad enough you'll make it happen yeah. and if yeah. you're not willing to work that hard well you just don't deserve it yeah that's just you know plain and simple facts facts yeah so, you get what you put in for sure yeah so you were talking about podcasts one of my favorite podcasts is uh real af oh like, andy frisella andy frisella which first form perfect segue to kind of what we're talking about uh the whole first form opportunity that yeah you, you know you could possibly attain let's talk about that a little bit how did that come across so um one day one day i'm at work so okay let's rewind okay so a couple months ago like maybe six seven months ago i saw this ad on instagram and it says first born become a sponsored athlete win fifty thousand dollars okay cool uh boom uh submit the application i like first form I, I love the values i love what they stand for i feel like it, it really relates to me and what i support and my values so i i went ahead and submitted that form whatever didn't even think anything of it well maybe like uh last week might have been last week or two weeks ago um whatever um first form i get a I get, I get a follow from this guy and this girl and i click on their names whatever first form headquarters and then i get a guy first form whatever he's wearing a first form tag okay cool i get a i like two minutes after that i get that follow i see uh i get a text message and it's this guy who's in first form hq and talking to talking to me how he's like oh hey we really like your page we like what you're doing out there and stuff like that. We saw I, your, your application really stuck out to me about becoming a first form sponsored athlete and stuff like yeah. that. Boom, whatever. Do you want to schedule a call? So I'm on the phone with this guy at first form. It's at 11. Meanwhile, I'm keeping my barber waiting. I'm standing outside on the phone. My barber's getting pissed off at me. <laughs> He's like, hey, man, I got clients, man. Hey, what? Do you talk on the phone while I cut your hair? Whatever. Because I'm on the phone talking to this guy getting a haircut. Yeah. And uh, so he asked me a lot of personal questions, all this stuff. And he says, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a good runner up right now. Uh, they've selected seven winners, and I'm one of those people. Okay. Uh, I'm one of those people that are uh, going to like have a good chance, have a good chance of winning. Yeah. Um, and he was he was giving me little tips here and there 
about trying to uh, like like how I'm going to stand out more. And actually, one was doing stuff like this, putting okay. myself more out there so people can see me. And For that's sure. a, that's another reason. Like back to what we were saying, like I need to I need to put myself more out, out there, there yeah. me, but not too much of me. And I want it to happen organically, where it's natural, it's kind of flowing and stuff like that. Yeah. Like, I don't want to come off as trying too hard. Yeah. Because I like, like, I like genuine things, and yeah. I'm, I'm wanting to be genuine. Like, I'm like, hey guys, I hey, this is me. I'm Mike. Yeah. Yeah. I'm out here, and be all corny and shit. Yeah, no, no, sure. like who I am as a person. That's who you're seeing right now. For sure. Honestly. So what, what would a sponsorship from First Form mean to you? And Ooh. also, if you'd like to shout out some of the sponsors you already have. Okay. Uh, you got Preston. Oh, okay. Okay. I'm going to shout out First Form. A shout out to Preston. Uh, shout out to David. Uh, Sull Sullivan. Shout out. Yeah. And then uh, also shout out to Tack Hunt Fish. That's, uh, that's my boy Roque. He uh, hooks it up with these nice shorts and stuff like that. Do Tack Hunt. Uh, Tack Hunt Shorts. Great brand, great brand, great shorts. I like what they represent. Uh, they represent lifestyle. If you're a bro, just trying to yeah. get out there, drink, whatever. And that's an RGV company, right? Yeah, RGV company, so, dude. So, guys, go support, man. Go, go support, support Tech Hunt Fish. Uh, go follow the page um, and check out the shorts. Check out the stuff, man. Um, lifestyle brand. Uh, they're great shorts for the beach, loungewear. Uh, working out, I'll tell you, uh, if you follow me on Instagram, you already know I'm always posting Tag Hunt. It's great stuff out there. We'll, we'll leave some links on the on the bottom yeah. of the, of the, of the page. Yeah. yeah, yeah, nah, so shout out to my boys out there. For sure. Yeah. So what would a first form sponsorship mean to you? Man, dude, that would be crazy. That would be crazy because, like, I follow the Real AF podcast yeah. and stuff like that and Andy Frisella, and I, I like what he preaches. He keeps it real as fuck. You know what I mean? Pun intended. Yeah, yeah, pun intended. And, uh, like... What the shit he's saying makes sense, you know. Yeah. Well, he's actually and, one of the biggest inspirations for yeah. this podcast. Oh yeah, for real. Yeah. Good man, because and I like how he's like, if if you're a pussy, you can't listen to that. Yeah. Shit. You can't like if you're gonna get offended. Like there's even times where I caught myself getting offended. <laughs> you know, and I'm like, I like that. This this mm -hmm. motherfucker exposed me. You know, yeah. I like that. You know, I'm gonna keep listening be, just yeah. because of that. You know, and I, I like that shit. So um, uh, I I agree with the majority of what he says. For some yeah. things I don't. But that's fine. That's gonna that's, it's gonna yeah. gonna comes with. Yeah. Uh, but it was great. I, if if I could get sponsored by them, um, I would go all in. I think I'm up for it. I think I deserve it. And uh, man, dude, who knows, man? There's the opportunities are limitless. Working in there in the headquarters and stuff, that'd be crazy. Yeah, man. it would be crazy. That'd be crazy. That in, I'm telling you, and like, I mean, just what he says, that environment, dude. No, nah, if you go follow the page and stuff like that. Um, like, dude, their facility is like top notch, yeah, dude. Actually. And they're built, they're building another one. So I was on the phone with that guy Dan Sullivan, and uh, we we had like, we were on the phone for like thirty minutes, and we were talking about the Legionnaire program and stuff like that. And uh, the Legionnaire program is like you represent you, you products, you get a lifetime discount or not discount, but like uh, you get lifetime commissions off of your code or whatever, yeah, stuff like that, like stuff like that, yeah. Um, but uh, no, he was. We we're talking about the facility and how they're going to make one. They're going to make one on the West Coast, East Coast, and then one in Canada. And I was like, "Hey, bro, what about Texas? Yeah, what about Texas? I'm like, you need to come down to Texas." But yeah, no, the facilities are top notch, dude. For sure. Top notch. Uh, that's actually one of my goals. I want to make a facility one day. I do. I really do. For athletes and everybody. Yeah. But uh, that's a that's a big thing. And I mean, you hear that a lot, but I. I believe I'm gonna, I'm gonna open one up. So yeah, Carlos and I, I don't want to, I don't want to put it on the podcast, but we've been manifesting something of our own too. So that's great. That's great. Yeah, yeah don't, don't, yeah, don't talk about yeah, it. Yeah, we, we, we want to give it some time to plan it out and stuff, but we, we have some plans coming in the future. Good, good man. Yeah. I'll tell you what, you don't sit in your hands too long. Yeah. Sometimes you got to make some make some moves, make shit happen. For sure, you know, and I, that's what I've learned is like sometimes like when you when you message me, I said fuck it, let me just go, yeah. whatever, like you know what I mean, like and I'll show up uh, when I, I commit the shit, and um, um, so I don't like to sit in my hands too long. I'm more of a reactor, you know, like um, I don't think about things too much. I like to instinct. You're in it. You're yeah, in it. my gut has never led me astray. Yeah, never. I follow my intuition all the way. Yeah. My problem has been that I've overthought things too much to the point where it just eventually didn't happen. Exactly. And so that's why that quote up there is something that helped me get this 
podcast launch accomplish what you can where you are right now with exactly what you have and look at you yeah look at you bro yeah i mean and all it took was starting yeah, yeah. starting and it's only gonna get and that's better. the hardest part starting yeah the second hardest part is sticking with it and it starts getting easier from there for sure yeah but yeah but yeah bro 100 percent. no yeah did you have anything else that you possibly off the top of your head wanted to maybe get a point across on the podcast on what we've kind of covered so far um make working out a habit uh it will improve your lifestyle you know you're a product of your environment the 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 shit that you keep yourself around, uh, the people that you keep yourself around, the, the things that you do, your daily habits, you're a product of that, and it's going to show yep. on the outside. Um, stop feeling bad for yourself. Don't feel bad for yourself ever because that's when things start happening. You need to take responsibility responsibility for everything that happens in your life. It does not matter. Responsibility is life. Yeah, It's you, and you're not going to get anywhere if you just start pointing fingers for sure. at everybody. Um, responsibility is i would say one of the biggest qualities that you need to have accountability accountability responsibility for everything it couldn't be your fault like so you saw that crash over there happen and stuff like that like there's a crash down the street whatever but you were right there having to run in front of your house that's your responsibility now like go out there go help yeah you know get yourself involved with the community yeah another thing yeah man yeah or even something personal i mean relationship someone does you dirty Oh, you know someone, someone does you dirty. Someone, someone does, does you dirty. dirty. It's, it's it's not your fault that your heart got broken. You know, but it's your responsibility. If someone to does if it. someone does you dirty, do them dirty back. <laughs> okay. <laughs> nah, I'm playing none of that no. shit. <laughs> no, but a real talk no, though. No, no, real talk. Uh, it, it's not it's not your fault why you got your heart broken, but it's absolutely your responsibility to regain. Facts. So facts because something led up to that. Yeah, you were doing something wrong. Something. Something wrong. Or maybe uh, you chose. Yeah, you, just, you weren't satisfying. Him. For sure. Yeah. No. Yeah. Responsibility. Uh, don't don't be petty. Don't get back at them if it's not. You and be, that's a, that's one major thing, dude. I was watching uh, Hot Box with uh, Mike Tyson. Hell yeah! And he had one. a Saquon Barkley in it. And, oh, I saw that. Um, one. There was I can't exactly remember how I, I don't know if you remember exactly how he worded it, but they were talking about uh, Saquon said that if someone does him dirty or something, he cuts them off or he cuts ties with the person that did him dirty or was talking behind yeah him, whatever right and that. mike tyson just like straight out spit some facts like no don't don't do that because now they won they that's what yeah. they wanted they wanted you to feel like that they wanted you to uh feel anger feel like hatred towards them so you cut them off like you 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 let them win they want yeah. that battle so I can't remember exactly how he said it, dude, but I that remember. shit fucking like that hit, that hit, and that's about that's that's something about being bigger bigger person is taking some responsibility. I put a quote out on Twitter the other day. I've been on Twitter a little bit more. I kind of like it, but I've it's never a, I've never it's liked funny, Twitter. It's funny, bro. It's toxic though. It is toxic, but is toxic. I don't I don't I don't follow that many people. <laughs> yeah. So it's kind of like my little like yeah. diary where I put quotes yeah. on there yeah. and stuff like that. It's it's the people that I followed in high school that repost shit. That's yeah. toxic because well, everyone I follow is like. I follow it. Oh shit, I like that quote. Oh shit, I like that quote. Yeah. Oh shit, some good information. Oh, you're a PhD in exercise. Oh, okay. You know what I mean? That's what yeah. I follow. That's the shit that I'm following. But yeah, I get forgot. It. What, what was the quote? quote? Let me Here, I'll find the quote. It was so, I think it was like don't don't you you don't always have to be the bigger person. Oh yeah, when no, you're surrounded will, with small people. Sometimes. Yeah, it says if if you have to keep being the bigger person, you're hanging around too many oh, small people. Yeah, 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 yeah. I saw that one too. I like that. Yeah. If you're constantly having to be the bigger person, maybe you're hanging around little too people. Small too people. many small little people. small people. Yeah. Okay, I have I have a thing. So, pick up, go on Twitter, and then pick a quote, and then we'll just read it to the thing. So just like whoever you're following, that's like who puts out some fire and shit, you know. I've never been a Twitter person, but uh, yeah. I've recently been getting into it. No, because I, I have a lot of shit on my Twitter. I see, I see people do put some. Oh, look at this one. I'll just read this. Whatever. Yeah. This is the first one I saw. Okay. <clears throat> do not allow anyone to speak with you with disrespect. Not your friends, family, colleagues, no one. You don't need to react with anger or frustration. 
So long as you treat everyone with respect and courtesy, you are within your right to demand the same in return. That was pretty good. That kind of like hits on the point that we were just kind of talking about. Hey, that's the shit I surround my mind with. You know? Yeah. There's a lot of good stuff out there. I can't really find anything. Yeah, no. <laughs> it's because like my, I'm not gonna lie, my Twitter's unusual. It's all, it's either, it's either ch uh, Chiefs, it's either some some science sports shit, yeah, or funny quotes or like good quotes. See, this is a quote. It, it kind of has to do with the, what we were talking at the beginning, where it's like you don't want you want to be a dog, but you don't want to be overly aggressive. Yeah, with it. yeah, yeah. So yeah. this is a quote from Jordan Peterson. Oh, I like him. Is you should be a monster, an absolute monster, yeah. but you should learn how to control it. Because yeah. it's better to be a warrior in a garden than a gardener in a war. Yeah. yeah. I, love that, I love that quote. That's a, that's a good one. I've seen that in the reels so, and shit. This one's a little bit more deep that I'm not going to actually... I'm not going to elaborate because it'll take forever, but it's actually, it's actually one of my biggest inspirations in life by, uh, by a guy named uh, Orson Welles. And Orson Welles is back from the 90s, and he was actually fighting for equality back. You got to keep in mind, this guy is a white, rich man, and didn't have to. He was living a life. But he was fighting for freedom of slavery when he was already getting attacked by media. You know, like, why are you doing this type mm -hmm. of stuff? Uh, but he says, to live free, you need to live in debt. And what he meant by that is um, if you... Everything that we attain, we owe back. Meaning, if you have riches, you owe to the poor everything that you can do for them. Yeah. If you have freedom, you owe to the slaves all that you can do for them. If you're not living to give back, then you have no point in living. And he says, even though... Facts. He says, even though my lifetime will never see freedom of slavery, and even our kids' kids will be ancestors of it, I'm still going to fight for it for today because I know eventually people will hear my words. So this guy was fighting. Genius. Yeah, this guy was genius. fighting for something that he knew he was never going to be able to see with his own eyes. But he fought for it anyways. Bigger picture, man. It's crazy. It, it takes a very humble and noble person. And that's yeah. probably my biggest inspirations of my life. To, for someone to like sow that seed so early and will probably made his life a lot worse than what it could have possibly... That guy didn't have to care about the future of humanity. He could have mm -hmm. just lived his life to the best of his he, he could have been bougie bro yeah. he didn't have to do all this yeah, stuff exactly but yeah he put himself out there hey what's what's your definition of freedom like what do you what do you need to do to obtain freedom you I think I'm living in freedom right now and so okay. I'll say uh, opportunity the opportunity to do and maybe maybe I don't have maybe I'm not I don't have the most privilege as somebody else has yeah. but I have the I have the opportunity and the options to do things. So like, I'll kind of compare it. We had a podcast about South Korea. I mean, the South Korean people they don't have any type of freedom. They yeah. can't go to school. They can't make a living off this stuff. Yes, maybe at the beginning of my childhood, maybe I didn't start. The, the as, South Korea, or the North Korea. No, uh, North Korea. I'm North sorry. Korea. That's okay. Yeah, maybe my childhood wasn't set up for me as somebody else living up exactly. north or whatever yeah. Yeah. but that does not again accountability that does not make it okay for me to be like oh well i mean that person had it a lot more privilege than me i can't make it better for myself so the fact that i have the opportunity and the privilege to actually go and make something of myself that's enough freedom for me yeah that's what i that's what i would say for you yeah. what would you think yeah what about you i mean for me freedom is right now if i want if i want to go start a business right now I can if I want to go buy a new car right now I can like I have the ability the freedom to speak my mind I have the freedom I have peace like I don't have we, we're not uh, imprisoned I we're guess. not imprisoned to anybody else's beliefs you can believe whatever you want mm -hmm. you can do whatever you want it's just that's for me, that's that's freedom, bro. Because, you know, I I have family that like, they live, in, in conditions where it's like, they don't. It's not like they don't have the freedom, but. The conditions that they, or the environment, the environment that they live in, does not provide them 
the freedom and that the they wish yeah. they had. Yeah. So I see that, and I'm lucky to be where I'm at sure. because I don't. I mean, thankfully, uh, I'm pretty well off. I mean, I I, I can't complain, dude. Um, and I have future goals that I can reach because I have that freedom that yeah. we have. You know. Okay. What would uh, you say? My definition. Uh, I would come kind of putting my spot myself on the spot too but my definition is maybe the willingness to do whatever i want and still be happy doing it i like just being happy really yeah. that's my definition of freedom being happy able to like go where i want to go where i want to do what i want to when i want to yeah. i'm gonna keep it like that simple um yeah and back to like what you guys were saying, like uh, so, uh, so conditions and where we came from and stuff like that. And it's your job, it's your job to get when you have little kids. If you guys plan on having kids, is to make those conditions better. Yeah, for that kid. You know, I saw this thing. It's like, man, they be coming out with some fire reels on Instagram. But like, uh, so it's like this guy is like, he's like. My grand my my great grandfather my great grandfather walked to work. My my grandfather rode a bike to work. My dad drove a car to work. I drive a Benz to work. My son's gonna yeah walk to work again. Fly. No walk walk to work again because no it's like because it's like tough times create yeah. great men and yeah. great men create tough times. Yeah, you know what I mean. So, yeah. Something like that. But but you know it's it's your job. But what we need to do is because like so as. Uh, as our generations change over and stuff like that, that quote shouldn't even be a thing. You know, it should be like you're creating the conditions that just keep improving. You know, that 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 tough man is going to create an even tougher man. You know what I mean? So that process, that history does not repeat itself. Yeah. You know, and I think that's what's going to create most freedom for most people, you know, because like yeah. shit's like really fucked up right now. Yeah, that's yeah. one of those things which you just said that that's bigger picture shit. That's bigger picture stuff, but yeah. it, it's a lot, it's a lot easier in black and white than to actually to to actually do it. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, bro. Especially but, in these times, bro. Yeah. People are these, in these times. People are willing to give their freedom up, bro. Like, hell no. Like, there's so many people that are willing to give their guns up. Dude, that's your right. That's this is Second Amendment. You know, like that's you have the right to bear arms, bro. Like you have the right to protect your family. You have the right to defend yourself. And when the government says like we want to take all the guns away, and there's those people that are like, okay, uh, you have to have a, a a vaccine mandate. Okay, like all those people that are just okay, okay, okay. Yeah. It's like, bro, you know that you're giving. Every time that you say yes, you're just giving a little piece of your freedom away. Exactly, like exactly. This is why I kind of brought up that question. This is because, okay, so I was, what's your definition of freedom? Okay, how do you obtain freedom? So freedom takes some discipline and some sacrifice, okay? So if you're undisciplined to stand up for yourself and you're going to give away a little bit of your freedom every time someone does that, no, no. So in order to be free, you have to sacrifice and discipline. I think Jocko Willinks said that. Yo, go look up his definition of freedom. Freedom mm. is earned. Uh, yeah, freedom is earned. Freedom is good. earned. That's why. So, like, we're talking. So, that's why you correlated, um, okay, I want to be able to do this, and then my conditions are tough, and this and that. It's because you know you have to earn that shit. Yeah. You have to earn that shit. You know that. That's why freedom is correlated with hard times. Yeah. You know? Same thing with the Revolutionary War. These motherfuckers, like, guerrilla warfare invented that hell. They sacrificed following the rules to win America. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? Got gotcha. you. Yeah. That was pretty deep, huh? That's hard. Yeah, no, the back to what I was trying to say. But yeah. 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 You can't let people take your freedom, man. Hell that's, no. That's, I mean, you earn Stand it. Enough and... for yourself, man. Well, the people before us really earned it, right? Exactly. And now we're right? giving it back. Exactly. Exactly. It's it's that it's that rotation. That's yeah. where we need to step in and, yeah. and stop that. Yeah. We need to step in and stop that. Another thing, though, about that is we're, we're evolving so fast as the human race is that, like, sometimes, like, the parents don't even know how to react to it, you know? How do you be tough? Yeah. 
especially nowadays, man. There's so many soft people, bro. Yeah, if you're growing up tough, you're at, you're at an advantage. If you yeah. had a hard life when you were younger, you're at an advantage right now. Yeah. You are. You are. You're going to be that strong man that creates a better future. Yeah. Yeah, man. I, I mean, I've just co-workers, man. I've seen so many new guys get hired. It's, you know, you, you they have... A couple struggles, a couple hard hard days, and oh, you know what? They call it quits, man. They call they, it quits. It's too hard for them, and I it's like, up. bro, what do you like? What do you plan? Man. What do you plan? Like, well, I always ask myself, like, what's your plan for your future, man? Like, if you if this is hard, like, bro, you're stocking chips, bro. If this is hard for you, bro, if this is so difficult that you had to quit. I don't want to be in your shoes, bro. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, but you ask them that question, and most of the time, I don't know. They're entitled, bro. And no, and they no, feel most entitled. Of, no, most of the times, I don't know. You know what I mean? That's scary. That's the scary yeah. part. A lot of people don't know what they want to do, man. You need to find something you're good at and stick with it. Yeah. And work, run with that. That's that's kind of what I did with the whole PT thing. Yeah. You know, uh, honestly, man, I thought I was gonna get into business. I'm kind of into business, uh, but I didn't know what the hell I was gonna do out of high school. I really didn't. But I was, I, fitness was always in the background. I was always pretty good at it. Good at it. I was genetically gifted. Understanding shit came easy. I've always been good with people. I'm good at all these things. I can apply it to this. Yeah. Let me run with that. Yeah. Yep. And I mean, you you're find, doing something yeah. you love, man. So you're really not working. You're just nah, working. nah. I'm making money doing what I love. Yes, sir. Just, I'm just making money to do this. Wow. Wow. This is cool. <laughs> that's cool. Yeah. And, and that's really like. Um, that's really what we have in plan, you know, like build something to be because people say like, oh, once you make your own business, like you won't have to work a day in your life. No, dude, like you actually have to work more, yeah. but yeah. you're not going to feel like you're working yeah. because it's not gonna you feel as love much as it, work. bro. Yeah. It's and not it's like you, you know, yeah. it's, it's you. That's you. That's you. Yeah. This is something that you build, man. With this, you, y'all, uh, y'all going to get like, how you going to get monetized? Yeah, exactly. you, guys, you guys plan on getting monetized? Yeah, I want to get some sponsors, hopefully. Yeah? Get yeah. that Joe Rogan Spotify deal. <laughs> yeah, Fuck. yeah let, me, bro. let me hit him up real quick. Yeah. 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 Like, Yo, Sullivan, you got nah. you know Joe hey. Rogan. <laughs> so what do, you, what do you plan on doing with that? Like, how are you going to, what's the approach? Well, I would like to link up with some pretty uh, local companies first. And then hopefully, Smart. yeah, hopefully that'll push me up to... I'm kind of gauging it also, and this might be a little bit too conservative, but gauging it on, you know, at what point is the podcast blowing up? Because, I mean, it'll be kind of weird if I'm, like, approaching bigger companies for sponsorships. and yeah. like, okay, what's what do you have to show for it? Exactly. And what are we going to get at? What yeah. are we going to get at? Yeah, there? exactly. It has to, it has to be, you have, so, they have to be getting something. So, you, yeah. Sure. And I kind of want to prove what I can do by myself before I kind of get out there. Yeah. But then again, that's a little bit too conservative. Yeah. What kind, what kind, of, what kind of brands are you trying to reach out to? It could be anything, right? Yeah. Because this is like a general common sense. Gen- yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, um, yeah, man. Well, I'm going to definitely go out of my way and tell people to come to you. And if I can, if you bring me on again, maybe I can yeah. give some more shout outs, some more companies and For stuff sure, like bro. that. And yeah, we'll try to get your name out there, bro. Because yeah. I love this. Ambitious. This is ambitious and stuff like that. Very humble. Humbling. You know, I like hanging out with dudes like this. Like, we're like on the come Like-minded up. minded people. Bro. Yeah. No, yeah. seriously. Like. Hustlers, grinders, like yeah. we know it's gonna be tough, but we gotta grind it out. Yeah. It's all good, you know. Like uh, I like that. Like you want to stay in the same spot forever, man. No, you never want to get comfortable. You gotta bro. keep moving. Gotta if you're getting comfortable, so you're doing something wrong. Yeah, and so I was I was going like a little bit of vulnerable, right? Yeah, I was going through some uh, like I was in my head a lot, right? And there's this like seven year old man uh, who. He comes to the gym. He's really badass. His name's Mr. Gaver. Shout out to Jeffrey Gaver. He doesn't use technology. <laughs> <laughs> but, but no, but he, he told me something, right? He'll have these little conversations. Yeah, see you, man. Take care. Take care. Yeah, we, he, he'll talk to me. We have these little conversations all the time. And he told me something I needed to hear. Yeah. And he's like, if you find something and you're good at it, you need to stick with it. You yeah. need to go all the way with it until you can't anymore. Because once you leave it, and you try and come back, it's never the same. It's not going to, no, it's never yeah. going to the same. So you need to stick with whatever you're doing through the hard times, this, that. Like, you got to stick with it. For sure. And, like, it's, and it seems like, damn, it's time to give up. But no, you only have one, he, this is what he said, you only have one opportunity. There's one opportunity to do it and get it right. Yeah. So you need to stick with it. And I was like, damn. 
I even told him straight up on the spot. I was like, damn, Mr. Gaber, I needed to hear that. Yeah. And he gave me an example. So he's a master electrician, something like that. And uh, what he was telling me is like, he's from New York and he was telling me he, uh, so this man came up to me one day. He's like, hey, uh, would you like to invest in our company uh, for $1,000 for 2%? Of of the two percent of the company, yeah, that company was Apple. Dang. Dead ass. Like I'm not even kidding you. This guy, he told me he's like, yeah, I, I fucked up a lot of my life. <laughs> no, no, for this is how he talks to me. He's like, I fucked up a lot of my life, Mike. And you need to like, you see opportunities, you take them. Like yeah. because like even if it sounds stupid, just go with it. And yeah, yeah man, like just do it. Like because he told me that he, if he kept that, he would have had. I think that. That two percent would have been like worth twenty seven billion dollars. Yeah, man. And this is a true story, Mister Gaber. You're a dumbass. <laughs> I'm gonna show you this too. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, uh, now nah, he's cool. He's cool as fuck. Yeah. But yeah, he he told me you find something, you stick with it, man. And he's only got one shot to do it. And we I see, needed to hear that. Yeah, I really needed to hear we that. See, the thing is, as we get older, we start to like things stop to be stop becoming so possible. I yeah. I, I mean, I have a TikTok actually. And um, I got this fortune cookie one time. And the fortune cookie said, it was hit. yeah, in order to be successful, you need to think like a kid. And yeah, that's, that's hard, bro, because when we're kids, we're told you can be anything you want. But then at some point in your life, you start to grow up and society then tells you, no, yeah. you can't. And what we, we believe it. Like, yeah. We just, for some reason, that dream that we always had is no longer attainable because everybody else told us, well, you need to fall in line. Yeah. I, I agree with that. I think you should embrace that child mentality. Yeah. Like, you don't have to act like a kid. Ch- yeah, kid childish. Shit, right? But embrace that childlike mentality because, honestly, like, how I feel, like, I embrace it. I like, I act like a kid sometimes. Like, I don't care. And ask my clients. Ask anybody. Like, they're like, Mike, you're, like, always, like, up. <laughs> you're, you're always up at it. You always got all this energy. You're always doing this. And, like, that's, you know, I think I, I, I think I, at some at times, I think I think like a kid, but like a very sophisticated one. I yeah. don't know, <laughs> but yeah, I I agree with that. Like, cause I honestly I feel like I could do anything I set my mind to. I really do, cause I feel like I have that de- determination and grit. Like I really do. I feel like if I were to apply myself to one thing, I can do anything. Yeah, I don't care. I'm, uh, except algebra. <laughs> except algebra. I fucking suck at algebra. Yeah. I suck at math. But yeah, I count money though. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah, bro. No, I truly feel that though, and it's. I think it's a imagination, creativity. You need to keep that your entire life. For sure. Another thing that man told me is like, when you least expect that opportunity, like, like when you're complacent, you shouldn't be. But when you're complacent and you feel like everything's working out for you, when an opportunity that's insignificant arises, and you feel like it's nothing that's when you need to lock in when you start to feel comfortable you need to lock into that opportunity mm-hmm. you need to see and see where that takes you because yeah. that's what he told me he was he was making money he's like i don't need it and i don't need that there's never yeah. going to be computers handheld computers around yeah that's literally what he was talking about and that's but that's when you need to focus in when it when you least expect it that's when you really need to focus yeah that's good man well mike we got to get you back on for sure no um, definitely how long was that? Maybe about an hour, 15, okay, cool. 20. But okay. uh, is there anything you want to close off on? Um, it's not about you, but it starts with you. Okay. Um, so we project how we feel onto the world on a daily basis. How you feel about yourself is what you're going to put onto the world. Yeah. So if you want to make the most impact into the world, you need to work on yourself. For sure. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, Mike Allen, all of his social media is going to be the f- it's going to be the first thing in the description. Go check him out. Go check out his Instagram and whatever else he wants me to put out there. I'm going to put down there. So go check him out. Thank you, Mike, for hopping on, bro. It was a really good My pleasure. My pleasure, man. Really good conversation. Yeah. So until next guy, next time, ladies and gentlemen, you already know, make sure you share the podcast with at least one or two people because they can enjoy it just as you just did. So until next time, catch you. Peace. Kicks on the track. On the track.